You talking to me? You talking to me? Okay, that's my pathetic attempt at, at, at reproducing a classic sentence. This segment is all about conversation. What do we have to do to have a conversation with somebody else? It turns out, in addition to all the stuff that we've already talked about, there are these pragmatic aspects of language that we have to solve. So for example, if I'm talking to you, should I be looking at you or somewhere else? Um, if I'm in class and I ask someone, uh, ask the class a question, do I mean that I want you to give me an answer or do I just want you to think about it? Um, here's a sentence. Do you have the time? Do you have the time? What does that even mean? Well, it means, do you know what time it is? And could you tell me what the time is? So I'm asking you, do you have the time? But I mean something completely different, right? Do you know what time it is? And would you share that information with me? Can you open the window? Sure, I guess if I needed to, I could open that window. No, I, would you please open that window? We use sentences all the time that don't actually mean what they say. And you've got to figure that out pretty quickly when you're having a conversation with someone. Okay, one of the things that we use to have conversations with other people, it's like a it's agreed upon rule that no one tells you, you just figure it out, called a given new contract. If I start talking about something different that I haven't spoken about before, then I need to signal you that I've changed topics. That's the given new. So um, maybe we're gossiping about our friend George and we can talk and talk about that. But if I'm gonna tell you new gossip about somebody else, I need to tell you, I'm not talking about George anymore. Now I'm talking about Matt. If I don't, let you know what I'm talking about, sentences get really confusing. So we checked the picnic supplies, the beer was hot. What? Well, I gotta let you know, right, that the beer is part of the picnic supplies. One thing that people have to do in conversation is to establish common ground. It's one thing for me to stand up in front of a lecture hall and speak. It's another thing for me to figure out that you have understood what I wanted you to understand. And we know from Herb Clark and the fabulous work that his students have conducted over the years, that a conversation involves a give and take. One person can't be passive. It's gotta be two people working together. So has the listener understood what I wanted them to understand? And if the listener doesn't tell me that, then we're kind of not having a conversation. So what do I mean by that? This is a uh, language from an actual phone conversation. It's on the telephone. So Sam says, you don't have any nails, do you? And Sally says, um, fingernails? No, no, nails to nail into a wall. I'm, I'm hanging pictures. No, okay. So Sam's asking a question and Sally has to point out that she doesn't know what he means by the question. That's what I mean by speakers and signers having to work together before you have a conversation. When you establish common ground, there's a couple of things that you have to figure out. So for example, if I'm speaking to someone, did the listener know that I was speaking to them? Or did the listener notice that I spoke but not didn't actually hear what I said, huh? Or did the listener hear what I said but not understand what I said? Or did the listener actually understand what I said? These are the things that must be established before a conversation can continue. People having a conversation must work together to build common ground. So here's an example. Uh, two people working to build common ground. A uh, woman said, named Miss Dimple says, where can I get a hold of you? And the response is, I don't know, lady. See, I'm very ticklish. And she says, because she's trying to build common ground, I mean, where do you live? I live with my brother. That's an example of two people building common ground. And I have to show you an old comedy skit by these two old comics, Abbott and Costello. The name of the skit is Who's On First? And it's a failure to establish common ground. 
Two people are talking about the people who play on a baseball team, but it's a very odd baseball team because the names of the players are very strange. The guy who plays first base is named who, the guy who plays on second base is named what, the guy who plays on third base has the name I don't know, but it's never, there's never common ground established. Enjoy. You know, strange may seem they give ball players nowadays very peculiar names. Funny names? Nicknames. Penny. Not as funny as my name, Sebastian Dinwiddie. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Funny it didn't Oh, absolutely. Whee! Yes. Now, on the St. Louis team, we have uh, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find out. I want you to tell me the names of the fellas on the St. Louis I'm, team. I'm telling you, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. Do you know the fellas' Let names? Me, yes. Well, then who's playing first? Yes. I mean, the fellas' name on first base. Who? The fellow playing first base for St. Louis. Who? The guy on first base. Who is on first? Well, what are you asking me for? I'm not asking you. I'm telling you who is on first. I'm asking you who's on first. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first. Who? The first base. Who is on first? Have you got a first baseman on first? Certainly. Then who's playing first? Absolutely. When you pay off the first baseman every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. And why not? The man's entitled to it. Who is? Yes. So who gets it? Why shouldn't he? Sometimes his wife comes down and collects it. Whose wife? Yes. After all, the man earns it. Who does? Absolutely. Well, all I'm trying to find out is what's the guy's name on first base? Oh, no, no. What is on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? That's what I'm trying to find out. Well, don't change the players. I'm enough. not changing nobody. Take it easy. What's the guy's name on first base? What's the guy's name on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. He's on third. We're not talking about him. How did I get on third base? You mentioned his name. If I mention a third baseman's name, who did I say is playing third? No, who's playing first? Stay off of first, will you? Well, what do you want me to do? Now, what's the guy's name on third base? Well, what's on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. He's on third. There I go, back on third again. Well, I can't change their names. Will you please stay on third base, Mr. Broadhurst? Now, what is it you want to know? What is the fella's name on third base? What is the fella's name on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third, third base. base. Woo! You got an outfield? Oh, sure. St. Louis has got a oh, good outfield? absolutely. The left fielder's name. Why? I don't know. I just thought I'd ask you. Well, I just thought I'd tell you. Then tell me who's playing left field. Who is playing first? Stay out of the infield! Well, don't mention their names out here. I want to know what's the fellow's name in left field. What is on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who is on first? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. Oh, take it easy. Take it easy, man. And the left fielder's name? Why? Because. Oh, he's center field. He's center. In addition to building common ground, people in a conversation have to figure out who speaks when or who signs when. It turns out that this turn-taking thing is amazingly precise. In fact, the gaps uh, between speakers or signers is so small that somebody has to predict when they can jump into the conversation before the other person has finished saying or signing whatever they were going to say or sign. So the average gap is only 200 milliseconds. It depends uh, on the country. Some countries have longer gaps, like the Danish have a gap that's half a second, and other countries typically have much shorter gaps. Um, apparently in Japan, the gap between turn taking is only seven milliseconds, which is amazing. On average, it's about 250. That's it. Thanks.